morning and God bless you. I wanted to take the time to thank uh, the general public, of which you are a part maybe, for all the support you've given us by purchasing our amaryllis bulbs and plants and seeds. You're keeping us in business and we're really happy about that. This morning I wanted to share a little information with you that I think will help some of you uh, to attempt uh, enlarging your amaryllis garden by chipping a bulb. So here we go. I have a bulb that was uh, unearthed two days ago. It's been cleaned and I'm going to chip the bulb in such a fashion that I will cut through about one half to three quarters depth into the bulb from the basal plate and by doing so I will separate individual sections of the basal plate which will then be fed by the scales on the top side of the bulb. You can get production as high as uh, 15 or 20 bulbs bublets by chipping a bulb that's blooming size. Uh, you may not get that number, you may get less, but uh, many people get even more than 15 or 20. So this is one method of production. Let's give it a try. You want a, a large enough bulb so that it has a good basal plate to begin with. You can half and then quarter and then eighth in your slices and that's acceptable that's the way most people recommend but I like to disregard the even cuts in half and in quartering and eighths and to go by the roots that surround the basal plate so I'll cut in this I'll cut without discrimination to quarter half I'll capture a root with the basal plate. So that's an aid to uh, help it along. So here we go. I'll make my first cut after I clean my knife with a little alcohol. We want to keep it reasonably sterile. A little messy there. Now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to cut between the roots in such a fashion so I'm at least a half way maybe three quarters through the bulb so I've got that cut now I'll go again here's another root I can go for that and on the other side I can split it through those roots and here I go to the center three quarters maybe Okay, and again, keeping those roots in mind. Okay, I'm doing real good with that. Another cut. Okay. Here's another possibility. Okay, and on and on you can go. Now, what I have found in the past is that these tend to grow back together. So I take a little toothpick or a small piece of wood and pry them apart so that they'll remain separated from one another. Takes a little time. Okay, now I've got fairly good separation. Here's one other I'll do. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I want to give it a bath in a systemic fungicide. So I have a little container here and I'll put my K2 
chemical in. That's plenty enough. A little messy. Now I'm ready to soak my bulb like so. Wouldn't hurt to wouldn't hurt to have a little more depth on the container. You could submerge it on up to the very top of the neck. But this will do for demonstrations. Now, I would recommend leaving it in your fungicide treatment for about 30 minutes. Uh, maybe not that long. Let's say 10 to 15 minutes. At least 5. How's that? Well, I'm not going to do that this morning because I don't want to prolong the video. But that's how long you want to soak it in a good systemic fungicide. And then after it's soaked, the next thing to do is to plant it. So I have prepared a little container. See the pyrolite? It will hold moisture, and that's what we want, is something that will uh, give the right moisture environment for the bulb. So after it soaks sufficiently, then we'll set it in here. I didn't have uh, any more perlite on hand, but I did have vermiculite, and so I'm going to use the vermiculite to work it in around the bulb, like so. Just a little packing down. And the only thing remaining is to give it a good soaking with water. Actually, I use the systemic fungicide. That'll just help it along to stay free of uh, whatever bodies might be in the soil there. Uh, if you don't use a fungicide, then these bulbs when they're chipped will rot quickly on you so you got that's a, necessary I don't have a piece of saran wrap with me but I could actually put it around and I will do that a little later uh, around the top of the bulb with the rubber band to hold it in place and that way I won't have to constantly be checking the soil to keep it moist you don't want to over uh, water it too much water will uh, produce a rottening. So just a fair amount of moisture in the vermiculite or perlite, whatever agent you choose to use. Uh, that's about all there is to it. And you can expect uh, uh, maybe two months later, two and a half months, sometimes as long as three months, depending upon the temperature the bulb is in, you'll begin to see bublets popping out around the mother bulb. The mother bulb's going to die, but it's going to leave quite a number of offspring. So that's the way we do it here. You can give it a try, and maybe you'll have success too. Come see us on our eBay store, www.stores.ebay.com slash Amaryllis Man. God bless your heart. See you on eBay. Bye-bye.